<clears throat> so for some of you woodworkers out there, or maybe probably more somebody that wants to get into woodworking, um, these, all these pieces right here, uh, these walnut pieces were just top cuts from my uh, sawmill, like most people would consider them trash. So I decided instead of just putting them in the wood stove or whatever, uh, I'd get the old planer out and plane them down flat and throw a little, sand them up a little bit, throw a little Waco oil on them, which is what I'm using right now and make some uh, cut racks out of them. And Amazon's got a ton of options for the, uh, the hangers and they're really, really easy to do. And these are just absolutely beautiful pieces of wood that would have otherwise been, you know, trash. I got a couple more, but they, uh, I, and all I did was, you don't have to use epoxy. I, I like using epoxy because it stabilizes some of the softer wood. A lot of this stuff sat out for a minute. And uh, basically I take the underside to 120 because it doesn't really need any more than that. I, uh, you know, I do the, I do the knots and all the cracks and stuff with epoxy. You can get an epoxy, a small epoxy kit, tabletop epoxy, like this one for about $30. You can get it at Lowe's too, and it's about the same, but I like to stay consistent with what I use. So I just stick with the stuff off Amazon. Um, it's about 30 bucks for one of those kits. It's a half gallon kit. You can do a lot of these pieces. If you're not pouring bit, doing big pours, you can do a ton of these pieces with something like that, you know, a half gallon. Uh, most of these, I think I did all of these in six ounces. So you get three ounces of resin, three ounces of hardener, and you're good to go. And now I'm just brushing on Watco Danish oil, um, which is this, and I do front and back, um, just the natural stuff. And then I prefer a spray lacquer because uh, it, it maintains a more, to me, a more natural finish. But I do the underside first, and then I do the top side. And then I'll wipe the excess and it just, you get a great, great finish, you know, and uh, some of these knots will really slurp up a lot of this oil. So you got to just keep going, you know, throw it on there pretty thick and it'll slurp it up. And if you got a crack here and there, it doesn't even matter. It, like nobody's going to care um, because, you know, it's kind of part of the wood. Um, I got a piece of maple here, um, you know, it's just a really, really good, easy project, and you're basically using trash wood. If you know somebody with a sawmill, a local guy, you know, somebody like me that's got a small sawmill, typically we don't mess with these top cuts or these round cuts because it's just too much effort, and I had some time and just wanted to do something with them, so... Cut racks it is. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a wicked, wicked easy project. Um, and, uh, it, they just turn out awesome. I mean, you can really start selling this stuff on Etsy or local, local shows and, and stuff. Uh, Pretty, you can move this stuff wicked fast. That, might, that maple looks pretty good too. Um, but anyway, I just kind of wanted to share this. Uh, the sap wood will draw in way more than the heartwood typically, unless it's a knot. Like that knot just slurping it up. But uh, basically, the wood you could almost consider free if you can find it. A can of that Watco's 15 bucks. That uh, tabletop epoxy kit is thirty. The forty-five dollars, a little bit of sandpaper, um, and a planer. Of course, you gotta have the tools. But you could get you could get a Harbor Freight planer, or one used off of Facebook. That's where I got mine. Uh, and uh, you know, for hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks, and uh, you know, you're not 
not going to get a DeWalt 735 off of Facebook for a couple hundred bucks, but you can get one that's going to do the job and get you get your ball rolling here on some of these smaller, more straightforward projects. And then it's ultra satisfying. Um, the maple's all right. It's not, it's not as good as that walnut. And uh, basically what I do is I'll leave this Watco to sit for uh, about three days. And uh, let it cure up real good. And obviously if it's colder out, it takes longer to cure. Oh, I gotta wash that up. But, but you know, like this was gonna be a piece of trash. That was gonna be a piece of trash. And it's just stunning. You know, and you throw some, you can do a wine rack out of it. You know, I got these little wine rack things. Um, you know, you got these little, you get these little wine rack doodads off Amazon. You know, Ooh, you turn it into a wine rack. Put a little French cleat up top. Uh, little feet down at the bottom so it doesn't mar your wall up. You know, put a cleat up top a uh, four inch French plate will hold a hundred pounds um, you know this stuff just looks awesome I love it I absolutely love it and it was trash wood yesterday um, this is an old fence board and I got miles of this stuff these I think I got off Etsy somebody just taking old railroad spikes cutting them tapping them and I just got two little hangers little coat rack and it looks awesome you know super rustic people like that kind of stuff um, but anyway i just wanted to share this um for those versioning woodworkers and uh yeah just stuff looks awesome you can't you can't not love it you know what i mean you can't not love oil walnut Getting a little high in here, honestly. In these fumes, I'm, I should be wearing my little respirator, but uh, I just want to get it done. And my respirator's covered in, in dust and walnut dust. But anyway, I still should be wearing it. So don't, you know, don't use me as an example there. But anyway, yeah, that's it. I just wanted to share that. It's awesome, right?